So why do I continually talk about the pre-tribulation rapture of the church? It's because the signs, the signs, the signs, they're everywhere. They're pointing to the soon rapture. Let's talk about that today. I'm also going to bring up some comments of the day and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River channel. And as I do every day, I'll remind you that I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor. And I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord and I like hanging out with you guys. So get comfy, kick your feet back, have a coffee, a tea, have a big glass of milk and a, an entire row of Oreos. Don't just have two like the serving size says. That's just That just gets you warmed up. <laughs> or grab whatever you like to eat or drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Okay? So look, we're looking at the signs. I'm never going to look. I'm done with looking for a day and an hour of the rapture. I never thought we'd get that anyway. I'm done. I'm looking at the signs that look for the perfect time period of the seven-year tribulation. And I believe we are right there. All the signs are pointing to the fact that the rapture of the church is about to happen. And I wanted to go through and look at a few news headlines and then read a short article that shows you what is going on in this world. And, it, and it's mind-blowing because every day I go through these headlines and there's more and more every day. It never slows up. There's no shortage of material ever for these videos. Uh, new Disease X. This is from The Telegraph. The World Health Organization warns of fungal threat to humanity. In an echo of the agency's warnings about viruses ahead of the pandemic, a list killer fungi is unveiled. Sounds like a really bad cartoon character, but I'm sure it's not good. Uh, business line. World is in its first truly global energy crisis with oil consumption likely to grow by 1.7 million barrels per day in 2023, the world still needs Russian oil to meet the demand. <laughs> I, I don't think Russia's going to give up the oil. <laughs> I, don't think he, I don't think they're in a very giving mood right now. I think 2023 is going to be a crazy time. I don't think we'll be here, but we'll see. If the Lord wants us to be here for a little while longer, will be here. It's all up to him. He didn't let me. I talked to him. I said, let me decide when you're coming back. And he just looked at me. I was like, all right. All right, you decide. So he's coming back in his perfect time. Uh, this move just assured an invasion of Taiwan. President Xi just opened the CCP conference on Monday with the statement that the control of Hong Kong is now complete and that Taiwan is next. It's no big surprise there. Anybody following it with any measure knows that it's inevitable that invasion is going to happen. But don't worry, the United States, we are going to help Taiwan. And we're also going to help South Korea, Japan, Ukraine. We're not, we're helping everyone except for Israel, the one we should be helping, you know. I just got off on that little tangent. <laughs> All right, here we go. Suspicious fertilizer plant fire adds to fears that America's food supply infrastructure is being targeted. Another suspicious fire, this one at a fertilizer plant, has raised new suspicions that the country's food supply system and agricultural industry are purposely being targeted to cause a food supply issue. We've been saying this for months. We've been seeing it for months. It used to be, on an average, you know, you'd have three or four food plant fires a year in this country. There's hundreds now. That's a little fishy. You know, when it gets, when it's a few a year and it goes to a hundred, it's a little fishy, right? No. <laughs> As Vladimir Putin watches over Russian nuclear drills, the West is growing ever more weary of actually having to deal with a nuclear strike. I wonder why you keep poking and you keep poking the bear and then the bear just bites your face off. And you're like, why would he do that? Huge Russian nuclear drills watched over by Vladimir Putin were a rehearsal for wiping Britain and America off the map. A state media spox declared last night. And uh, it's just another sign. like the, the wars and rumors of wars. It's off the charts. This is worse, way worse than the lead up to World War II. 
uh, in a stunning strategy reversal, the Pentagon will no longer rule out the use of nuclear weapons against non-nuclear threat. The Pentagon no longer rules out using nuclear weapons in retaliation to a non-nuclear strategic threat to the homeland. Interesting. And you can look at all this and say, well, none of this is going to happen. But it's none of it's going in the other direction. It's all going in a worse direction. There's no steps that are, okay, this seems like it's getting better. Ooh, Bloomberg says the Fed seen aggressively hiking to 5% triggering global recession. Federal Reserve officials will maintain their resolutely hawkish stance next week, laying the groundwork for interest rates reaching 5% by March of 2023. Moves that seem likely to lead the U.S. Um, to lead to a U.S. and a global recession, economists surveyed by Bloomberg. Incredible. Now listen to this. This is a little article that's about the globalists. That's pretty interesting. I'm going to put the link in the description because I probably won't read the whole thing. Uh, the globalist plan is lining up exactly how the Bible foretold. Unless you have been living off the grid for the past two years, you realize that our nation, in fact, the entire world, is in a transition and has been deceived, causing confusion, chaos, and fear like never seen in recent history. We are witnessing the setup for many events that the Bible has predicted will happen right before the return of Christ. Even if you're not a follower of Christ, one crucial fact is undeniable. The Bible has over a thousand prophecies and over half have already been fulfilled. It's a mathematical impossibility for those predictions not to be accurate. One in 100 quadrillion to be exact, which tells us that the remaining Bible prophecies will be fulfilled. They will. And with 100% laser point accuracy. The Bible tells us that four things will be in place right before the return of Christ. I'm going to say that sentence again before I read these four things. Pay attention. This is important. The Bible tells us that four things will be in place right before the, <coughs> excuse me, the return of Jesus. Number one, a one world global government. We're that close. They just got to click the switch. We're that close. Number two, a global economic system, one way to buy, sell, and trade. Number three, a global dictator the Bible calls the Antichrist. Number four, a global false religion the Bible calls the false prophet. We're there. All that stuff is there. You know what? You know what's waiting for that stuff to kick in? You know how all those four points can just kick in instantly? The rapture of the church. The chaos that happens when whatever amount of people it is, I don't know uh, if it's millions, I don't know how many people it is. Some people say it's 100,000. Some people say it's 2 billion. So so somewhere between 100,000 and 2 billion people disappear from the face of the earth. I don't know how many it is. Nobody knows. We can just guess. Now, because of the advancement of technology and artificial intelligence, the global elitists have been working on a plan that is lining up exactly how the Bible foretold us it would. And they are ready to unleash it to the entire world, including the United States. The pieces of the puzzle, I always use that pieces of the puzzle thing. The pieces of the puzzle the Bible lays out that will occur in the last days appear to be coming together perfectly. Understand that this has been well thought out and planned for decades, for sure. And those in power are ready to use the following crisis to proceed with their agenda. If you haven't noticed, our world runs on artificial intelligence and digital technology, which we have become dependent on and rely on for work and communication. In other words, it is currently impossible to live and work without this technology. How will one person be able to monitor and control an entire world population? Through the advancement of artificial intelligence, our world has transitioned into a digital traceable, big word, traceable world. This will enable governments to track and trace every financial transaction through blockchain, digital and programmable currency. Not just what you can buy, but also how much you can buy. 
This is a setup for the Mark of the Beast system and coming tribulation government. For sure. For sure. The people who are in those seven years, they're going to put gas in their car. And if, and if they put in more in a week than they want, they'll just be able to literally just shut it off where your car doesn't work. Car decline. Too much gas use. It's incredible. Examples. Smart cities. Smart businesses. Smart banks. Smart homes. Smart schools. Smart vehicles. Everything, including all government agencies, will be run by AI, artificial intelligence, if you, substitute, uh, if you substitute the word smart for surveillance, then you have a society run totally by AI where the government will be able to track and trace everyone. All this stuff I'm talking about, well, you couldn't comprehend it. In the 80s, when we started looking at Bible prophecy, when I started looking at it in the early 80s as a teenager, you couldn't understand this stuff. You couldn't understand how they would track everything and trace everything. There was no, there was no internet. It was just, we didn't understand it. We just knew it would happen because we knew God's word is 100% accurate and his prophecies are 100% accurate. So we knew it would happen, but what a time to be alive now to see all this technology and know that we're on the cusp of the rapture of the church. In this new world order, your location, what you buy and sell, who you are with, how far you drive, how much food you buy, how long you work, your current health condition, and how much electricity you use. In other words, there will be no personal information that your government will not be able to get access to. All this information will be downloaded on the passport that you will have in your phone. Your personal information, health records, and banking information will be on your phone and will be available to those that our government deems should have access to your information. The plan, however, is to transition this information from your phone outside the skin to a digital device implanted inside the skin. Every person will have a social image and score created. They're already talking about it. They're already, they, I talked about that guy yesterday who implanted his bank card into his hand. Technology is all there. Technology is all there. Many countries are already using these devices to monitor humans and their activities. Our government is waiting to use the next crisis to implement the remaining pieces of its plan. You know, we have this election coming up in a couple weeks. Is there going to be a crisis before then? I'm not saying yes, and I'm not saying no. You know? For the first time, this is the last paragraph and it's short. For the first time in human history, the events foretold in the Bible are now being understood. Now with the advancement of artificial intelligence, the Antichrist along with the false prophet will be able to use this technology to usher in the beast system that will be able to monitor those that do not worship the image of the beast. This system is already up and running the only Step left is implementing it. Good article, huh? I'm going to put that in the description below. I'll put the link there. It's, we're there, we're there. Point, point to a sign that tells us we're not there. Because all the signs are pointing to the fact that we're in the season of the rapture. And it said we would know the season. All the signs are there. We're just waiting for the rapture of the church, because that's that final puzzle piece. Once you click that in, you see a picture of the seven-year tribulation. It starts. That last piece is in our hand. It's the rapture. Once Jesus meets us in the clouds, click that piece is there. Chaos and all this stuff that we just talked about will happen. It's a pre-tribulation rapture, just for those who are wondering. Um, let's read some comments of the day, okay? Shall we do that? Okay. Brother Tom, this is from Watch Train. Brother Tom, my opinion on the rapture, I once thought that when the bombs come down, we go up. But then I was thinking what our Lord Jesus said, it will be like the days of Noah. People will be eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. That tells me that it will be just another day. But it will shock the world and the great revival will happen and the tribulation will begin. 
Thank you for the information. Love in Christ Jesus, Billy. Billy from Watch Train, you're right. You're right. You know, I've, I've thought the same thing. I go back and forth. Do you guys do this? I go back and forth. Sometimes I think the world is, is going to get really dark really fast and we're going to be snatched away quickly, raptured very quickly to take us out of danger. Other times I think, like, like Billy just said, it's just going to be a normal day. I mean, there's no normal days anymore, but you know what I mean? A day like today. I'm just sitting here in the car, talking to my friends, and wham, I'm pulled out. And I know that the word rapture kind of means in its root that it is like a pulling, a snatching away quickly, like out of danger. But maybe that danger is unseen. Maybe that danger is Satan and his angels trying to prevent the rapture and coming toward us and Jesus pulls us away quickly. Maybe it's that. That would kind of fit in with the eating, drinking like a normal day. All I know is all the signs are pointing to the fact that it's coming really close and it's exciting if you know Jesus. If you don't need know Jesus and you're scared right now, yeah, you got a right to be, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right, let's go to the next comment. Shane Smith. I talked to a man yesterday after he had literally just lost his wife. I asked him if his wife worshiped God and he said, yes, it was her whole life. She was in the church. I talked to him about 90 minutes and explained he will soon see his wife in the air because Jesus will be here shortly. That encouraged him, and he said it was luck that he ran into a total stranger to talk to him. I said, it wasn't luck, pal. It's a God thing. He works wonders every day. After we parted ways, I considered what a blessing for me to talk about God to him. A two-for-one in the Lord's kingdom, LOL. We both got something out of the deal. Praise Jesus. Shane, you're absolutely right. And you know why you were able to do that? Because you were a willing participant. And I always tell you guys, we all need to be willing participants. You need to wake up in the morning and all you need to say to Jesus at some point in your prayer or whatever, you just need to say, Lord, I'm a willing participant today. Use me. I don't know in what way. I just want you to know that I want to be a willing participant. So just use me. And you know what? He will. He will. That's beautiful, Shane. All right. Ephesians verse said, Amen. Don't be deceived by the false Messiah. Hold on to the real Jesus Christ, the real Messiah. Amen. Everyone is talking about this. This dude, I don't know his name, this dude in Israel that the rabbis are saying, we're talking to the Messiah behind the scenes. And we, we're seeing video now of this dude. He wears glasses, so he needs to heal himself. But <laughs> what blew me away is that, you know, the rabbis think this guy is perhaps their Messiah. And I guess I'm hearing that he's starting to perform miracles. All right. This is what blew me away. A few people in my comments said this line. Do you think this is really the Jews Messiah? I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> like Jesus is their Messiah. Jesus is the only Messiah. They missed him. They're falling for this false dude with the spectacles. The guy needs healing. <laughs> yeah. So that's why this comment from Ephesians verse is don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by the false Messiah. Hold on to the real Messiah, Jesus. Thank you. Scott Myers said, the headlines today aren't new. They were written a few thousand years ago. I love that. Yep. Yep. We get tomorrow's news today, don't we? One more comment. Russ, male artist. I can't express in words how desperately anxious I am waiting and watching for the rapture of all true believers in Jesus Christ. This lost world has gone, in my opinion, past the point of no return. Besides lost souls, I do not see anything worth redeeming in this country or the entire world. I am growing more hateful of sin and the cruelty of men toward men. It will be a great pleasure, joy, and great relief to be free of this body of sin, disease, and pain and to finally see Satan pay for instigating all of this horror, evil, and heartache on mankind. Please consider your eternal soul 
and the finality of separation of yourself from God, family, friends, and all that you love. Please consider Jesus, God's son, as your savior, savior before it becomes too late for you, please. You are so loved, don't throw it all away. In any case, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. I love that. Thank you, Russ. That's a good one. Whew. Yeah, I don't I don't see anything worth redeeming in this country besides people for Jesus either. We're done. We're done with we gotta be done with this country and with the world. We're for Jesus. That's our agenda, right? We're for Jesus. And if you, and if you don't know Jesus, I have a little story for you that I'm that I thought about this morning. All right. This is for those who reject Jesus or who are sitting on the fence and they're like, I just don't know what I think, but I don't think I need that in my life. This is a little story about a great swimmer. Okay, this guy is the best swimmer in the world. He's just swimming away, swimming away, swimming away. And there's this enormous, beautiful, gorgeous yacht to his left. And there's this crappy little wooden fishing boat, little, tiny little fishing boat on his right, but he's just in the middle of him swimming away. And I say to him, hey, excuse me, swimmer, Here, here's a, a free ticket to go into the yacht. You can go rest your arms and your legs and a little cabin in there for you. And they even have shrimp in there. <laughs> go here, here's your free ticket to the yacht. And he looks at me disgusted. You kidding me? Don't you realize how great a swimmer I am? I'm fine. Leave me alone. I'm fine. Like, well, you know, this this yacht's pulling out of here soon. And, and you're going to be stuck with that crappy little fishing boat. And I don't know if you notice, but the tip of it, you see a little smoke. That thing's about to burn. So and the dude's in. He's totally offended. Leave me alone. Hey, don't, you, don't you realize what a great swimmer I am? I'm fine. I don't believe in any. I don't need any of this. I'm fine. I'm a great swimmer. I'm like, dude, you're going to run out of energy. You're going to get hungry. Your arms are going to give out. And we're going to be gone. Hey, take my free ticket. Get in the yacht. Hurry. Get in the yacht. I don't I don't need that. I, I'm, I'm offended you'd even tell me that. Get away from me. And the yacht slowly sails away. And now the little wooden fishing boat is completely engulfed in flames. And the swimmer who just wanted to live his life and swim his swim is now tired. And all he can do is hang on to the burning embers of a boat that's about to sink anyway. It's all death. Everything on that side led to death. That's what he chose. He chose death. He didn't know he was choosing death because he was like, I'm a great swimmer living my life. Just let me live my life. Let me do my thing. I'm like, but I offered you the most incredible thing. And then when he's when he's hanging onto that boat, he's like, come back with the yacht. It's not coming back. That's Jesus. That's your need for Jesus in life. Jesus paid the price. Jesus did everything. You don't have to do anything. You just have to know you you need him to forgive your sins and you have to know that he's your rescuer, that he paid the price. You have to believe in his finished works. You have to believe that in your heart. And when you do believe that in your heart, you're saved. That's how simple it is. It's a gift of God, grace. Grace means an unearned gift. And it's right from God. He sent his son to die to cover the sins of the world. All you have to do is believe that. It's all you have to do. First Corinthians chapter 15. Listen to this. Brothers, I declare to you the gospel, that means good news, which I preach to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast that word, which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, 
according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That's the good news right there. Paul wrote that to the Corinthian church. They were messed up. And he had to again tell them the good news. Christ died. He shed blood that is incredible. Incredible. It washes us white as snow. It erases our sins. And he was buried and he rose again and he's coming back. And that's the gospel. That's the good news. You just have to believe that in your heart. A lot of ambulances this morning. You have to believe that in your heart. You have to know that Jesus died for you. You have to know that that he's the works. We believe in his finished work. He did everything. We just have to believe in it. Cling to him. Hang our body on his promises. Once you belong to him, he'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. People email me all the time, panicked about their salvation. And within that email of them being panicked about their salvation, or, or will I miss the rapture, they're declaring the gospel. They're telling me, I love Jesus with all my heart. I'm such a wretch. I believe in his finished work. But I'm so afraid I won't go on the rapture. I'm like, what, what, you belong to him. You're telling me, as long as I believe what you're telling me, you're telling me he's your Lord and Savior. You love him. You believe in his finished work. And you're worried about, what, what if I don't go in the rapture? Or, or maybe I'm not really saved? That's the enemy. You're telling me what the gospel is, and you're proclaiming to me that you believe in it with your heart. That's the enemy. The enemy can't stand he hates Christians. He hates God. He hates Jesus. So all day long, he tries to tell the ones who belong to the Lord that they don't, that they're not good enough. And you're not good enough. But you know what? Jesus is good enough. That's why we trust in his finished work. Okay? If you don't know Jesus, today is the day of salvation. This may be, the, this may be your one moment where you're taking this serious. This this may be your one moment where you're saying, this, this sounds right to me. That's ringing true. Run to Jesus if you're getting that feeling. Just ask him for forgiveness of your sins and tell him you trust in his finished work and believe that he lived and died and shed the blood and was buried and rose again and he's coming back. You believe that in your heart and you're saved. God will put the Holy Spirit right inside of you once that happens. You'll never be the same. Then you won't have to worry about the crazy things that are happening to this world. Do you guys see what's going on? Do you understand how close we are to the rapture? Do you think this world is sustainable the way it's going? Do you think the wars and rumors of wars are going to suddenly let up and stop and everyone's going to sing Kumbaya and hold hands? Do you think the coming famine that all the governments are warning us about is not going to come and it's suddenly going to be better? Do you think the pestilences, COVID and all this stuff is just going to stop? It's not going to get worse. It's just going to end. This is all predicted in the Bible. It's all happening now. And you have that ticket to that yacht. I just told you how to get it. It's just... It's grace. It's an unearned gift. He did it all. You just got to believe in your heart that he did it all. That you believe in Jesus' finished work and you're saved. That's the ticket to the yacht. Don't, don't just push this away. Say, nah, I'm good. Because your arms will tire and you will be hanging on to that burning wooden boat that just leads to death. And you will wish for this moment again where you could say yes to Jesus. That's what I have for you today. That's what I have for you today. I love you guys. I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to pray for every single person who watches this video. I do this every day. It's very important. God's house is a house of prayer. 
And God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you.